By the time you're watching this, the 58th inauguration of the 45th President of the United States will be in the history books. This past year has been anything but a typical election cycle here in the US. But whether you traveled across the country to attend, gathered at home to watch with friends and family, or actively protested against the entire thing, I hope we can set aside politics here for just a moment and enjoy a look at the details and appreciate the hard work and effort that goes into executing a production of this magnitude. The men and women involved with this production work incredibly hard over the course of a number of weeks leading up to the actual day of the inauguration, covering a huge amount of space with high quality audio and video, along with providing complex feeds to media outlets from around the world, dealing with winter weather and high security. This is not an easy gig. Before we go any further, I need to say thank you to my sources close to the production for answering my questions and being so generous with their time and helping me put this together. While I know they stand behind their work, in light of recent uh, witch hunts and other allegations of microphones and sound systems being rigged when things don't go exactly uh, the way people expect, I don't want this video to become a source for names for anybody looking to place blame in the future. Furthermore, as I was not a part of this production, nor was I there during the event itself, any number of the different things I talk about in this video could have changed between the time I saw them and the time that the event actually happened. So you would do best to take this video and the information contained within as my personal opinion. Uh, this is absolutely not a factual accounting of this production by any means. For those of you who are not familiar with the layout of Washington DC or the inaugural ceremony itself, let's take a moment to look at a map and orient ourselves to the action. With 250,000 tickets available for the ceremony this year, you might think that's a pretty good sized event, but that's only a fraction of the number of people who have turned out in years past, and only accounts for those who will be seated and standing between the Capitol building and the 4th Street Northwest perimeter. West of the 4th Street perimeter and continuing down the mall to 14th Street is all standing room for general public attendees. No tickets are required here, but full audio and video is supplied via delay towers and large video screens that cover the 10 plus city blocks that make up this zone. Here we're standing on the north side of the Capitol's west lawn. Uh, we're watching one of the crew move chairs and barricades into position, and this was over the weekend while it was snowing in the morning. You can see the seating that spans the width of the lawn in this area, and on the right side of your screen there was 3rd Street, and this is headed back up towards the Capitol building itself. Uh, you can see some of the zone speakers, the outfills here, the main hangs in the, in the background, and the zones in the foreground, and you can also see just a little bit of the platform there where they're going to actually do the swearing in ceremony. And now we're standing behind the reflecting pool on 3rd Street looking back at the building and that whole area we were just looking at is in front of us now. We were just standing to the left side of this frame. Now that we know where we are, let's get into the audio. Maryland Sound, or MSI, as you see on all the road cases and gear here, is the primary provider of audio for the inauguration and has been for quite some time. With attendance estimates around 900,000 in the days before the event, the task of simply distributing the audio here is formidable. When considering audio is required for that many people at both the main ceremony and also along the parade route which weaves through the city from the Capitol complex to the White House, more than 16 blocks away, the logistics begin to really set in. Pulling from years of experience operating at this scale, the crew at MSI maintain quality and control by breaking out into teams, each responsible for their own zone and systems. These individual systems, comprised of reliable and well-tested components and staffed by capable crew, make up the parts of the bigger PA system and ensure intelligible audio is heard through the length of the National Mall. At the core of this system is gear that we all know and have relied upon over the years. The sheer quantity is incredibly impressive, but familiar JBL Vertex speakers, crown amplifiers, and the trustworthy PM5D console are the backbone of this production. The public-facing portion of the PA system is made up of dozens of towers, each with one or two hangs of 4888 or 4889 boxes, deployed and aimed meticulously to ensure the reach and coverage needed to the deepest areas. You'll see here in the primary system, 14 box hangs of 4889, along with outfill hangs of five boxes and further out delayed hangs of six boxes, deployed as needed to fill in the wide standing area. 
The towers themselves are unique to Maryland Sound and afford the ability to deploy up to three separate hangs at one location with an incredibly small footprint. These are the same towers you may have noticed on TV during the New Year's Eve coverage in Times Square. Uh, they go up to 45 feet in trim height and are an awesome piece of custom engineering. At the front end of the ceremony system is a pair of cascaded PM5D consoles, which are handling all of the I.O. and routing control for the various feeds and zone sends. Two consoles are used to achieve the capacity needed to handle the various inputs and many, many dedicated outputs. While this is primarily a spoken word program, the crew is also handling audio from quite a few other sources. These include two full military orchestras, three full choirs, including the Mormon Tabernacle Choir, additional special guest musical performances, the Herald Trumpet Ensemble, 16 tracks of Pro Tools playback, and then of course the spoken word package. The signal chain for the spoken word program is again unique and has already seen some changes from years past. Gone is the stately and recognized around the world trademark twin SM57 setup. So well known for this use, it's actually sold as the presidential kit by Shure. Along with it went the fact that in inaugurations past, one of those 57s was only a 57 shell, with a high-end Sheps condenser microphone custom fitted inside to give the crew both dynamic and condenser options to work with as needed. This year the primary microphone will indeed be an SM57, but only a single one one this time. As redundancy is out the window with a single lectern microphone, a number of handheld wireless Shure UR4D microphones are on hand should they be needed. Continuing with the spoken word portion, the Chief Justice is wearing a lavalier microphone for his speaking, and there are two additional shotgun microphones on short stands flanking the lectern and pointed across the stage to reinforce the swearing in, as lavalier microphones are prohibited to be placed on the President or Vice President. With the sheer number of other inputs on this event, the microphones used on the orchestras and choirs were industry standard choices that were on hand in the quantities needed. Maryland Sound has a deep mic collection and their choices should be readily recognized when watching the broadcast. Breaking out all of those sends from front of house and getting them to the closer zones between the Capitol and 4th Street, an OptiCore fiber system has been the tool of choice this year. Allowing for audio as well as data to travel along the same fiber cable, Maryland Sound employs a dual Mac Mini setup at front of house with both computers running Windows under boot camp to view all of the amplifiers connected to the fiber on a single managed network. Other networked devices such as the Shure wireless microphones are also managed with this system. Fiber travels from front of house to the first set of delays, is broken out from there to cross first street overhead, where it reaches another set of delays and is again broken out to the various towers in that ring, and also sent across third street, this time on the ground and cable ramps, to the final tower in the primary system. The fiber breakout boxes used at each array include an incredibly smart feature, which is a simple microphone input. This allows an RTA microphone to be deployed at the zone or array and used as an input to the smart measurement computer back at front of house. Another clever piece of kit is the ultra portable Intel Nook and Focusrite Sapphire Pro based smart rig they're using at front of house for measurements. Check out the links below for more information on these tiny and mostly affordable little computers. They can be incredibly useful in live and installed sound applications such as measurement systems like this one. The subsequent delay towers beyond 4th Street are deployed in pairs of eight box hangs for each section of audience. These receive their signal from front of house via a microwave link with a high gain UHF backup signal on hand should the microwave link fail. In total, there are 10 towers of eight boxes or 80 Vertec boxes just handling the mall zones between 4th and 14th streets. My best guess without seeing each tower up close is roughly 172 Vertec boxes, both 4888 and 4889 are being used in the ceremony system alone. The parade route is even more spaced out and from what I could actually get close to, I would expect easily another 100 if not 200 additional Vertec boxes are in use along its path. That's not to say that this is a line array only show. Throughout both the ceremony systems and the parade systems, there are dozens of trap boxes and clusters expertly placed to fill in the gaps that past year's experience has shown need the extra attention. And for the real surprise, we should take another look back at the stage. Around the lectern, things begin fairly simply. The custom MSI hex wedges that I've so fondly spoken of before are again in use, flanking the lectern for typical monitor duties. Beyond that, a selection of some 200 other speakers 
speakers have been deployed throughout the dais. Over 120 JBL Control 25 speakers are in use under the VIP seating alone to allow them to hear the program. Other small discrete enclosures have been hidden and disguised all around the platform, providing discrete monitor feeds where they are critically needed. The crew is only getting away with this without feedback by building very specific mix minuses for each send. Again, expert placement and paying great attention to spillover uh, back to any of the sources is critical here. Down in front, larger JBL F35 boxes, which have been deployed as a near-field pair to cover the center seating section and front of house position, which are located between the widely spaced main arrays. The F-35, for those who are unfamiliar with it, is part of JBL CSX line, which complements their newer line array VTX systems. These are modern, lightweight, high-fidelity, high-power speakers. With the Crown iTech amps uh, matched up and running the newest V5 presets for those boxes, this is a very high-quality set of monitors they're referencing at front of house, and rightly so. Feeds to the press are handled with both a dedicated feed to the press pool, which then gets broken out from there to the various media outlets, along with press boxes actually located on the risers themselves for local press needs uh, up there during the event. Power is being sourced from the Capitol complex itself via cam lock tie-ins located throughout the grounds. Backup power is provided through a series of generators and all of the incoming power is passing through an automatic transfer switch before being broken out to its various locations. This provides real-time switchover to generators in the event of a failure. While this is a very bird's eye view of the systems being used, uh, to go into detail on any one part of the system could easily fill multiple videos. The additional systems and logistics surrounding in crowd control, public safety, and providing temporary communications for over a million people are equally as involved and impressive. I hope this was an interesting look into one of the highest profile events in the business and that it provided some insights to how a system of this scale is approached. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe and leave any questions you have in the comments below and I'll do my best to get you answers. If you like the videos on this channel, click on the affiliate links in the description below. You don't even have to buy those products, just following those links helps me greatly.